tonight. First, in the murder of George Floyd, in an order made public today, Minnesota Judge Peter Cahill ruled that four aggravating factors are present in the case. This means Derek Chauvin could face a much longer prison sentence than he otherwise would. The judge found that one, Chauvin abused his trust and authority as a police officer, two, treated Floyd with particular cruelty, three, committed the crimes as part of a group with at least three other people, and four carried out those crimes in front of children. Chauvin is facing a maximum sentence of 40 years in prison, but under state sentencing guidelines, the recommended sentence for someone with no criminal record is 12 and a half years in prison. Finding the four aggravating factors pre present, the sentencing guidelines allow the judge to depart from this recommendation, which means Chauvin is probably looking at closer to 30 years in state prison. His sentencing date is set for June 25th, and he also faces pending federal charges. The three men accused of chasing down and murdering Ahmad Arbery appeared in a Georgia state court today. The judge heard arguments on 11 motions from both prosecution and defense lawyers about whether certain evidence should be admitted at trial, including testimony as to Mr. Arbery's mental health and prior interactions with law enforcement, as well as evidence of racist text messages and social media posts from the co-defendants. Hearings continue tomorrow. Travis and Greg McMichael, along with William Roddy Bryan Jr., are also facing federal charges. They pled not guilty to hate crimes and attempted kidnapping charges yesterday. A newly released internal report from the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department into the death of Breonna Taylor has determined that the police officers who shot and killed Breonna last March never should have fired their weapons. The probe found that the officers should have used de-escalation tactics instead of firing blindly into the apartment. Bri Brianna was shot six times after officers busted into her apartment while executing a no-knock warrant. I'm joined now by Brianna Taylor's family attorney, Lanita Baker. Hey, Lanita. Hey, yo, Dad, how are you? I'm good. Glad to have you on. All right, so we'll get to the newly rela released report in just a moment. But first, I want you to weigh in on today's other legal developments. Looking ahead to Derek Chauvin's sentencing day in June, are you confident now that the judge has found these four aggravating factors um, present that he will get close to the max of 40 years for murder too? I'm not necessarily confident that he will get close to the uh, maximum 40 years, but I am confident that he won't get 12 and a half. Um, I, I did need to see this ruling from the judge, so it does give me some uh, peace of mind that he found those aggravators. Um, and based on what I'm reading, I think they said probably about 30, 20 of those to serve, 10 on superv uh, supervised release. Um, but yeah, I, I am happy to see that the judge made that ruling today. Also, in addition to the federal charges as well, so he, he still would be looking at more time in that case. Um, all right, so in the motion hearing today, we now know that the defense attorneys for the three men charged with murdering Ahmad Arbery are trying to admit evidence of his prior contacts with police and his mental health records, a tried and true defense strategy, right? But that didn't work in the Derek Chauvin trial. If allowed in, how do you think a jury will respond in this case? I think it would backfire on these three gentlemen. The things that they are trying to get introduced, they had no clue about until, you know, when they accosted Ahmaud Arbery and they attacked him and murdered him, they didn't know about his prior incidents. And so they, it shouldn't be the mm -hmm. end. Like, I'm hoping that the judge does the right thing and keep this out. I'm not upset at the defense attorneys for making those motions. As you said, it's a tried and true defense tactic, but the judge needs to do the right thing and keep that information out because it had no bearing on their actions the day that they murdered Ahmaud Arbery. And you know, the difference obviously in this case with Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd was that Chauvin was an officer and usually jurors are partial to, to officers. These are just regular guys, regular civilians, so yeah. they're not gonna get that. All right, now let's get into the newly released report in Brianna's case. Obviously the investigation's findings don't surprise you, I'm sure, but should it serve as further proof why another special prosecutor should be appointed with a new grand jury impaneled to reconsider state charges for the other two officers. It absolutely does merit why uh, a new prosecutor needs to be a, uh, appointed in the case of Breonna Taylor to bring justice for Breonna Taylor um, against all of the officers that fired their weapon. Daniel Cameron has shown that he can't do what is necessary uh, to indict the officers. He wouldn't even present those charges to the uh, grand jury for consideration. 
Um, so he needs to go. We need a prosecutor who's willing to do the right thing. Um, we said from day one that the officers should have retreated uh, and, and assessed the threat. And had they done what they were trying to do, they would have recognized that there was not a threat in the home, that Kenneth Walker was protecting his home from who he believed to be intruders. Uh, and, and at that time, they were intruders. Uh, only later would he learn that they were police officers. And had they known it was police, they would have come out and they would have let them execute the search mm -hmm. warrant because they had nothing to hide. Now, this report wasn't made public right, um, right away by the po police department themselves. The Louisville Courier Journal managed to get their hands on the copy. What does that say to you? Well, it just goes back since day one, they've tried to cover up um, their actions it, with Breonna Taylor and get, finding out what happened on that night. And in this case, it's a, it's a real disappointment because the interim chief did the right thing in terminating the other officers, uh, in terminating Cosgrove for firing over 16 shots and terminating Joshua James. But we learned from this report that she overturned the, uh, the findings of the investigator who found that uh, Mattingly, Sergeant Mattingly did in fact violate uh, policies. And she overturned and said that he did not mm -hmm. uh, commit any wrongdoing simply because he was shot. And I don't think him being shot that night should overturn uh, the fact that he violated the policies and procedures. And Brianna would have been alive had he not uh, fired his weapon. So that brings me to my next question. I think you kind of sort of answered it, but I want you to expound even further. You said that the report has raised more questions than answers about the decision not to discipline Officer Mattingly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Al from Al Officer Mattingly, the investigator found that he also should not have fired his gun. Uh, interim chief at that time, Yvette Gentry, I did not find any, she did not sustain any wrongdoing against um, John Mattingly, she said, because he was shot. She felt that he was entitled to uh, return fire. But again, had he properly assessed the threat, um, Brianna would still be mm -hmm. alive today. Uh, and, and none of the officers would have returned, you know, over 32 rounds into her home. Uh, and, you know, and Mattingly has been so uh, brazen about everything. Like he did absolutely nothing wrong. He wants to write this book. Uh, he's just so boastful. And it's like, no, you were wrong too. And your own department investigator concluded that you were wrong so you know mm -hmm. all right so what about the impact if any on the federal investigation federal charges yeah, yeah. so I, i'm hoping that the department of justice uh, separate from the one that's uh, investigating uh, the practice and practice but i'm hoping that the uh, department of justice prosecutors come back soon with the with the finding the fbi they've been investigating this since last summer uh, so plenty of time. We've seen everything that's out there. And at this point, it's not, I don't know what else they can uncover. So hopefully uh, they're teeing their case up to present to a grand jury and we get charges on all of the officers responsible for Brianna's murder. So what are the next steps, if any, that you and your legal team could take here? Uh, we're continuing to push for um, a special prosecutor to be appointed. I think it's important for people to understand that because uh, so many times we get, oh, the, the grand jury didn't, they found them not guilty. And no, the grand jury never uh, had an opportunity to um, to um, deliberate on charges against the officers on behalf right. of Brianna, only those neighbors. And so Jeopardy is not attached and we're in it for the long haul. There's gonna be someone that found, that steps up to do the right thing, whether it comes after elections, but someone's gonna do the right thing. And uh, we're gonna continue to push until a grand jury um, is able to hear cases on behalf of Brianna uh, and ultimately, hopefully a jury trial or, or plead or whatever the case may be, but we want these officers held criminally responsible. Well, we definitely want to have this conversation continue. We want to keep Brianna Taylor's name in the conversation as much as possible here on Making the Case. So, of course, Lenita, you know you are always welcome back on the show. All right, Brianna Taylor's family attorney, Lenita Baker, thank you.